I've got a new item that I've set up and I've set it up and I'm using the FIFO model group. If we have a look at the setup of the FIFO model group, I've got my ledger integration turned on to post physical inventory and financial inventory. I don't have the include physical value turned on. So let's have a look at the effect of the cost price. So when I look at the on hand, if we have a look at the on hand, we'll see that we have uh, a running average cost price here of 50. Now this price came from the purchase. So let's have a look. We can see that we've got 10 in stock. And if we have a look at transactions, then we have a purchase. So we have a purchase quantity of 10. And if we have a look, we'll see that we have a physical voucher of 500 and a financial voucher of 500. And so if we trace um, that uh, back, that gives us an average cost price of uh, 50. So let's keep a spreadsheet. So I've got a spreadsheet here and what I've done is put in my quantity. So we've got a quantity of 10, a price. So let's just update this. Quantity of 10, price and uh, total. Alright, let's go and put in another purchase and we'll see the effect of the price. So I'm going to go and put in a purchase Now our item default price will uh, pop in here. I'm going to put a quantity of 10 just to make it easier, but in this particular case I'm going to put the unit price as 60. So let's go and confirm the purchase order. Let's receive it, so we'll post the product receipt. So that's the receipt done. Um, so that's the physical voucher. Now let's post the invoice, which is of course the financial voucher. So if we update this and we'll post it. Okay, so that's the purchase order posted. Now if we go to our spreadsheet, let's have a look. So in this particular case, we're tracing this item um, as the model group with both physical and financial turned on but we're not tracking the uh, physical value in the voucher. So in this particular case we're going to track them all on the financial which is the invoice. So in this case we did 60, uh, we did 10 at 60 so therefore our um, total here is uh, 600. So if we look at this as a running sum, so 500 then plus the 600, that's 1100, our total quantity is 20. So that gives us an average price and if we work out the average price based on the sum amount, based on the total quantity uh, that we have on hand, then that gives us uh, a, an average cost price of 55 in this case. So let's have a look at the item and see if we ended up with that result. So if we go to on hand and have a look at my on hand, we'll see that our cost price here is 55. Now let's go and sell the item and then we'll see the effect of this cost price. So I'm going to go into sales and marketing. I'm going to go into sales orders and I'm going to put in a new sales order. So we'll sell that item. Alright, so we've got 10 and we've got the unit price that comes across at 100, so we'll leave the unit price there. Now let's go and confirm the sales order.
and we're going to pick, pack and ship so that we can get the physical voucher so I'm going to post the picking list we're just going to do the packing slip registration ok let me just change my warehouse because I don't have stock in that case so um, I did 24 let's just go and confirm again and let's try to update our picking slip but we'll have to cancel this one because uh, we don't have stock there let's go and post a new picking list this should pick up our change which is the 24 okay and then we should be able to pick these okay so now we've picked stock alright so let's post a packing slip for what we've picked and so alright now we've got the packing slip so if we have a look at what's posted here and again we're posting the physical financial you'll see that the inventory update is for 550 so 550 is the cost of our inventory which is the current average price of 55 that we saw and we had 10 of them so that's 550 so when we go to our invoice that's uh, what's going to post essentially as our cost of goods in this particular case so let's have a look at our voucher we'll see that our one account is for the thousand um, which is our receivable and we'll see here which is the cost of goods which is the 550 because it's taken that average price and used that as the current uh, cost of goods for that particular item now let's update our spreadsheet and so in this particular case financial we've taken out 10 and we've taken it out at 55 because that's our current um, uh, cost price so let's update our running total and so we'll see in this particular case our average uh, doesn't change with that sale so that's our average and we can see that when we have a look at our released item so let's go and have a look at our released item go back and have a look at our on hand we'll see that our cost price is still 55 okay let's go and put in another purchase order so that we can see the next variation so I'm going to go into my procurement and we go into purchases let's put in a purchase order so x870 is the item we're working on so in this particular case we'll say we're going to order uh, 5 well, let's order 20 and let's say the price is 65 so I'm going to go and confirm the price now what we'll see here is that the um, when we receive it so let's go and post the receipt alright so when we have a look at the voucher posting for this one it'll be at uh, 20 at 65 so 1300 so let's go and post the invoice but we're going to make a slight change on the invoice so let's put in our invoice number but the slight change is that we got a lucky break from the supplier and the price came in at 63 so they've only invoiced us for $63 for each item as opposed to 65 so let's post the invoice okay so that's the financial voucher again the receipt was the physical voucher now let's have a look at our spreadsheet because 
we're tracking this based on um, financial 20 and then the invoice price was 63 um, so if we have a look at our running sum then we've added 20 so our total inventory is now 30 with the additional cost that should give us a running average of 60.33 so let's have a look at the released item let's go and have a look at our on hand so we'll see that our cost price is now 60.33 so if we're going to have a look at our transactions it's worth noting in this particular case this was the last purchase I did um, so you'll see the 20 and you'll see the cost amount now you'll see if we have a look at the update here um, the the difference between the physical voucher and then the financial voucher so the physical voucher had 1300 and the financial voucher had the 1260 because of the price difference but in this particular case because we're not tracking the include physical value um, we're only going on the financial value documents and so therefore um, this is the one that we're using in our running average sum now so if we have a look at um, the, a sale let's say we sold inventory in this particular case so let's go and put in the sale and in this case I'll get my warehouse right so we've got inventory in warehouse 24 and I'm gonna sell uh, five of these so let's confirm let's pick pack and ship so let's pick We'll post the packing slip, post the picking registration, sorry, now post the packing slip. Okay, so we did five, um, so that should be at our cost price of 60.33. So if we have a look at our packing slip and look at the voucher, then we'll get 301.67. So if we then update our spreadsheet, um, we'll go 5 at 60.33. Now we'll see here in the spreadsheet that I've only been displaying to two decimal places at this stage. And you'll see that this is 301.65 and our voucher is 301.67 so you'll see if we increase the number of decimals um, you'll see that this actually averages out three uh, 60.33 and it'll keep going so internally when the average running cost price is running it'll actually use more decimals than the two that are visible so I'm going to update this to um, at least three decimal places which will be enough um, for the spreadsheet exercise so that you can see the difference so um, therefore we get the 30167 which is what you'll see in the voucher entry here so that's the um, packing slip let's go and invoice Okay, so if we have a look at the invoice, we have a look at the voucher, now we'll see the same 30167 here. So in this particular case, now we've got um, five gone at that uh, amount, so there's our five, um, and in this particular case, it was the 
negative 5 so we're taking 5 out of inventory so the cost price should remain the same so if we're going to have a look at our item so if we have a look at our on hand inventory and look at on hand we'll see that we still see 60.33 here so that's a quick walk through the example of how that cost price is maintained um, now there will be a true up effect um, based on that'll vary based on the inventory model when you run the inventory close so in this particular case the inventory model is FIFO um, so have a look in another video the effect of when you run the close and adjustment process uh, but in any case um, AX keeps that running sum so if you're trying to work out what that running cost price is and, and you're trying to work out the values that you'll see on your sales for the cost of goods sold um, it's calculated by that running sum total and working out what that average uh, cost price is based on the transactions going in and out of the system. Now again in this particular case we're only looking at financial because our inventory model group doesn't have include physical value um, in the cost price.